Hey everyone, before we start our lesson on projectile motion, I have got to share this scene from the movie Speed starring Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. It is a classic. Gotta love a bus that knows when to levitate in the air right before it reaches a gap. Pretty amazing. Projectile motion problems are really just a specific type of two-dimensional motion problem. So we just have to keep independence of motion in mind. When it comes to projectiles, um, the definition of any projectile is any object where the only significant force acting on it is gravity. And so what's nice about projectiles is that in general, as it is moving to the side, there's nothing pushing it left or right, and so its velocity in the x direction or the horizontal direction is going to remain constant, and its velocity in the vertical direction is going to be changing because of gravity. So there's a downward acceleration of 9.8 or 10 meters per second every second. So that velocity, as it's going, the horizontal component of that velocity is going to stay the same. The vertical component of velocity, if the object is going up, is going to be decreasing. And if it's going down, it's going to be increasing. Right? So the x component of velocity is constant. The y component of velocity is gravity times, or sorry, changes according to gravity and time. Since the horizontal and vertical components of the motion are independent of each other, it's usually best to apply kinematic equations to each component separately. The vertical component is going to be used to determine the time in the air and the maximum height and the horizontal component is going to, be it's going to be used to determine the range or how far the projectile can go before hitting the ground. The easiest type of projectile problem is when there is zero launch angle or when the projectiles are launched uh, completely horizontally. Uh, this is easier because we do not need to break down that initial velocity into its horizontal and vertical components. So if we look at the kinematic equation for velocity in both the horizontal and vertical components, we can really simplify these equations the velocity in the x direction is just going to be equal to the original velocity since the full velocity that it starts with is all horizontal and the horizontal velocity doesn't change so there's no forces left or right. The vertical component of velocity, again pretty simple, there's no component of, there's no y component in the initial velocity and so that vertical component of velocity is just going to be equal to acceleration times time. Same deal when we're using the kinematic equation for displacement. It can be simplified because the initial velocity is all x, and there's no acceleration, and there's no initial velocity in the y direction, so it's all acceleration. Since the only thing that's constant across both the horizontal and vertical components is the time, time is usually what we're going to want to solve for first. In this example, we have a pitcher that is standing on a wooden platform, 70, 7.2 meters above the ground, and he's trying to hit a target 11 meters away from the base of the platform. Um, I'm not sure what sport this is. Maybe baseball? I don't understand baseball very well. So what we need to figure out is how hard or how fast he needs to throw this ball in order to hit the target right in the center. The first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how long this baseball is in the air. In order to do this, we're going to ignore the fact that this is moving horizontally because the horizontal component does not affect how long it takes for it to reach the ground. So it's essentially asking how long would it take a ball to hit the ground if it was 7.2 meters above, uh, if it was released 7.2 meters above the ground and just falling freely. So we're going to use that kinematic equation. The y position is 1 half at squared. So we know the displacement is 7.2 meters. Acceleration is 9.8 meters per second per second. Time is 1.2 seconds. So this ball is going to be in the air for 1.2 seconds, and it needs to go 11 meters horizontally. So in order to figure out the speed that we need to have, we need to take 11 meters divided by the 1.2 seconds to give ourselves a horizontal speed of 9.1 meters per second. So those horizontal launch problems are pretty straightforward, but when we get into angled launches, um, that's when things get a little bit more challenging. They're tougher because now our initial velocity has both a horizontal and a vertical component. So the very the first thing that we're going to need to do is break that initial velocity into its horizontal and vertical components using right triangle trigonometry, using SOHCAHTOA. 
If the angle we're given is relative to the horizontal, then the x component of the initial velocity is going to be equal to the initial velocity times the cosine of that angle, while the vertical component is equal to the initial velocity times the sine of that angle. At this point, we just use our kinematic equations to solve for the values that we need to know. Remember, that in the x component, the acceleration is zero, and in the y component, the acceleration is equal to 10 meters per second per second in the downward direction. Uh, at the end of your notes, there is this uh, angled launch example problem. I don't really want to go through this whole thing through the video, um, but I would like to go over it in class next time we meet. So if you'd like to attempt it on your own, please do. Uh, otherwise, just keep that blank, and then we'll cover that when we meet next time. Uh, thanks very much. See you guys soon.